this, Jesus. We will seek to follow you all of our days, Savior. For you are our God. For there is no other God but you, O oh God. And so we will seek you. We will follow you, Heavenly Father. May you, O oh God, Lord, walk with us, Lord Jesus. That as we abide in you, O oh Heavenly Father, may you abide in us. As we draw close to you, Savior, may you draw near to us, Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship you this morning. Before we hear the word given to us by uh, Mam Shelley today, I will read again as we, for the month of August, we have been uh, sharing or preaching uh, on the armor of God. And I will read once more again just for us to, to just hear it once more in all together. And I'll start reading from verse... Uh, Excuse me, from verse 14. It says, Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation. Above all, lift up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all prayer and petition prayer, and petition, pray at all times in the spirit, and with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition for all of God's people, and pray for me that the words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation, for which I am an ambassador in chains, and pray that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. And that is the armor of God from Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 14 to 19. And I'll welcome uh, Mama Shelly as she brings the word to us. Good morning, church. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank uh, Pastor Luface to giving us uh, for giving us this opportunity as ladies in the month of August to come and share the word. It is a privilege. Uh, I, I'm so glad. And uh, we all know that this is our first. Women's Month without Mama Violet in our presence. She contributed and played a huge role in our lives, especially myself. I am what I'm, I, I, I am who I am today because of her teachings, her encouragement. Always when I'm down, I used to call her. And she will be like, Mama Shelly, stand up with your feet. Shame the devil. Be bold. Can we just have a moment of silence to honor her life? Oh, thank you. Annelisa, can you please repeat uh, verse 19? That was Paul, who wrote to the Church of Ephesians while he was in prison. 
Paul was someone who believed in prayer. He believed that the church of Ephesians, if they can pray for him, he will have the liberty to preach the gospel with boldness. So he just needed to be bold, to be courageous. This shows us that uh, when we are walking in this journey, you are not walking alone. We are not walking alone. When pastor posted that the ladies will be sharing in this month of August, I believe there were people who went down on their knees to pray for us. People who lifted us in prayer. If it wasn't those prayers, I don't know. But I am here today sharing the word of God because of other members' prayers. Meaning that even pastor, for him to stand here every Sunday preaching the word of God, we need to pray for him. There are people who are praying for him so that many can hear this good news. So that the word of God ma should, mm, mm, should manifest through transformed lives is because of prayers. God is looking for women who will go down on their knees to pray so that the, the work of God grow. Prayers are needed. Intercession is essential. So today, last week I was not here, but I attended church uh, via Facebook. And when Sister Z came uh, saying that I'm going to share with you from the book of Judges, the woman called Deborah, I was like, <laughs> and then God, what was I been preparing? <laughs> this since I was invited. And then what is this? Because our God is faithful. He said, go deeper. <laughs> the same woman, go deeper. Let me see how deeper I will go. Can you say, go deeper, Mama Sheikh? <laughs> Thank you. I love this woman. Can someone uh, please uh, turn the Bible to Judges chapter 5, verse 1 to 12? Judges chapter 5, from verse 1 to 12.
12. Thank you, Brother Liwon. So here, our brother just read, I'm going to speak about these powerful women, the woman of God. She was a worshiping warrior. She was prayerful, and she trusted God. So she, God chose her to be the leader at a very difficult time in Israel. The Israelites were stubborn. The Israelites were in a mess. They sinned against God. They were too tired to fight. But God called Deborah. to lead them at that time. And Deborah did not hesitate. He responded to the calling of God. He did she did not look sideways. Immediately when she heard the, way, the word of God calling, she knew that God is calling me to do something. God was calling her to release Israel from bondage. So this woman did not hesitate. He did not question the voice of God or wonder what will people say. Because nowadays, we are worried about people. We are not worried about our God. Remember, everything that we do, we do it for God's glory. So today, are you ready to stand on your feet when God calls? I love the God I serve because he, he, ca he calls, no, let me put it this way. He does not uh, call the qualified. 
instead he qualifies the called. Hallelujah. So there's no need to say, God, I don't have experience. No. He needs your presence, your willingness. The rest is for him. Amen. He works in mysterious ways. He makes, he calls ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Iti ingoma, iti ungitatala, angbegela, angsusela, angisele. That's the one I serve. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I arose. That was Deborah. He respected God's voice. And she stood up. She didn't look at the mess that the Israelites were in. He believed and trusted that God, the one we serve, will lead her. So Deborah had faith. Maybe for us today, to not listen to God's voice is because we don't have faith. We lack faith. Or maybe our relationship with God. Because it starts there. If we have a good relationship with God, if we know who God is in our lives, I mean, when your father calls, you will hear and you will know his voice. So because we are too far, we sometimes not even recognize that this is God's voice. He's calling. That's why we are not responding. But if we abide in him, he will always be on our side. He promised that he will never leave nor forsake us. He will always stay. He will always be there for us. So it's very, very, very important. Really, every day when you wake up, we have to check. Like if you are in a relationship, you will ask your love, how are you today? During break time, how are you doing? It's that kind of relationship. If we allow us ourselves to be always on God's word, we will be courageous like this woman, Deborah. She was, all, the Bible tells us she was always busy. I don't know, uh, in your business, what are you busy with? But Deborah was busy with the things of God. There was, not, there was no office at that time, but she will sit under the tree and prepare God's things. She was faithful. She was bold and encouraged and encouraged us. She found encouragement and strength in worship. There's power in worship. Where's Andy today? There's power in worship. When they're busy hitting those instruments, and Annelisa and the crew coming with their voices. Ay, zia wa indong azase Jericho. Amen. We know that from Joshua chapter 6 verse 20. When the trumpet sounds, the walls of Jericho collapsed. If we stand, 
even if you're not praying, just worship him. Or be still and know that I am God. He hears. God is good all the time. So, despite uh, your fears, listen to the God calling. Our fears, we don't have to worry about our fears. We just give them to God and ask him to take over. Because he's the one who enables us. He is the one who gives us the power to go down. Because the devil does not sleep. He fights left and right. So we mustn't get tired even ourselves. We have to always be on our knees. Glory to Jesus. I am so encouraged by this woman, Deborah. I understand we are busy, we are working. Yes, we are working for our families to survive, but we need to balance. We need to balance. God also needs us. We have to, to prioritize our life. We have to give God his time. God is always available for us. But we are walking far from God. We are walking fra far from God. I've made some notes here, but I can't see. Hmm? So these are prayers that you will sometimes say, God bless me with the car, but you don't see. And you see that you will just uh, cause accident where it does not need it and cost other people's life. So maybe I must rather ask God to correct my vision. I hear sometimes you say, God does not answer my prayers. No. Listen to what God says. It is not time. Your time will come. Then my time will come. <laughs> Amen. When we read from Luke chapter 10 verse 22, it says that uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The other version, it says the harvest is abandoned, but the workers are few. Why? Where are the women of God? God needs us. The work of God must be easy for the, for the pastor also because there will be women behind praying day and night, left and right, so that many can hear this good news. You, you can be busy, but one day you'll be accountable. God will ask you, what were you doing? So we really need to give God what is due to him. For us to be here today, there are people who prayed. It is not because we are wise. No. People prayed for us. I never thought I would stand in front of people like this and share the gospel. But because I'm saving, 
a miracle, wonder-waking God. I thank him. He is always faithful. What I like about my God is when I call him, he's always present. Psalm 46, it says, he is ever present. Wow. Ever present. He went somewhere. Some, no. He's always available for me. He just needs me. I don't know why God chose this woman to be repeated. But after the sermon, maybe, if not maybe, I believe you will get an answer. Move from your comfort zone and do what God wants you to do. And you can only do that if you believe. You can only do that if you trust the Lord. Metlaitlai, you coming all along from Angola. And then you met Shoni here in South Africa. He took you to Bloemfontein and you just agreed. Why? Because you love him, first one. Secondly, you trusted him. So if you are able to trust Motonji, hey, glory to Jesus. What more about God? Because you loved him. So why don't we give that love to our God? Wow. It's nice to be here. But it doesn't look like, hey? <laughs> so, brethren, you can ask God today to release you from any limitations that the enemy have put on your life that have kept you from the great plans God has for you so that you may wake up and arise to shine the glory of the Lord. You know, the devil is so clever. He knows that God has bigger plans than the problems that we are facing today. That's why when you try to stand up, he pulls you down. Because he knows God has bigger plans for you. Where now you just need to come out from the comfort zone and stand for God. God will use you. I used to say, I'm not talkative. Hey, you are just a vessel. God will use you if you believe. If you believe and I believe and we together pray the Holy Spirit must come down and Africa we be safe. Amen. If you and I can play our part, Africa will be safe. But if you're still there doubting God, those lost souls, you'll be accountable for them. So we are preparing our journey to heaven until we accomplish all the mission. If God can
kept me till today. It means there's unfinished business that I need to do. It means there's some things that I need to do. What are those things? I need to ask God so that I can finish them. People are thirsty. They want to hear the word of God, but we are quiet. Parking cinema shown. Why? Why are we ashamed of our God? Because he always provides for us. When we seek, he heals. The word of God, it says, his hand is not too short to touch the sick bodies. But why are we ashamed? Are we ready today for God's calling? God needs our availability. Are we encouraged today to take the word of God boldly? Let's pray to God to help us. Sometimes it is good just to tell God that if I try to make it by myself, I just fail. Lord, I need you today again. We need God. If you feel like you are tired, if you feel like you are hopeless, God is the answer. He will never let you down. He will never let you down. I'm talking from experience. He never let me down. There was a time where it was tough. Nothing. You know, wh when I say nothing, like having nothing in your pocket. But I prayed. And then you will hear the phone ringing. Hi, Mama Shelly. I just put so much in your account. Oh, my word. God is so good. I remember... This is 2021, the year 2022, the year 2020. I had to move here from Royal Village. They gave me a very short notice because my rent was behind. And I was so confused. But in my confusion, I read the word of God that God is the only answer. And I believed that. I remember we had a ladies' prayer on the 26th of March, 2020. I remember very well. We came here. I've never mentioned, you know, sometimes you just, in, in, instead of crying, saying one, two, three, you just worship and say, Lord, take over. We prayed here at church. It was half past six. Before I even get home, I received a call. Daughter of the Most High God saying, Mama, did you find a place? I was like, no. And once you find a place, I'm going to pay for you the deposit. Wow. She did not want to ask her what kind of accommodation you're looking for. She just confirmed for I'll pay your deposit. That's how our God works. So we're saying God, uh, God does not answer prayers because we are not playing our part. I've mentioned earlier on, 
God just needs you. Your willingness in she. Only. Honor here am I, Lord. Use me for your glory. And I promise he will use you. He will use you. People will always ask, how when, how do you survive? Your answer will be like, only God, only God, because he is always at our side. Amen. We saving a wonder waking power. His mysterious ways. Will you encourage others too today? To believe and to put their trust in God. Will you? Are you encouraged encourage us today? Iti any chorus it angimbonanga. Oh fana no chesu. Ha yangimbonanga. Oh fana na ye. Ha yangimbonanga. Oh fana no chesu. Ha yangimbonanga. Oh fana na ye. Oh fana na ye. to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it looks like men are enjoying than women. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the message today, it really just uh, saying, here am I, God. Use me for your glory if we can stand up as women and pray. We have so many departments in our church, children's department, women's department, eldership and the deacons and everything. You stand in prayer. So that everything can go well. We mustn't wait to see things going the wrong way. And then, No. You have to be a woman of prayer. A worshiping warrior. Because we lead by examples. Amen. When those poor souls get lost, we will be accountable for that. So we have a huge responsibility, which we need to take them seriously as RBC women. Yabona magufiga umama. You don't have to worry. You know that everything will be settled. What more? Magufigu mamum tandazo. A prayerful woman. Things will be changed. God is just here, not far. Anytime you call, he's here. So 
it's up to you how you take this message. Are you going to stand up and do what God has called you to do? It's up to you. But hi, Lena, I will stand up and continue to pray and continue to obey and be obedient. Because if it was not God, I in Kabekisimo today, maybe in Kabeki Buluki, but because God is on my side, the ever present one, I thank him. Thank you very much. Walk up to the front and just let that rejuvenation come into your life, that uh, revival that you need to come into your life. Come. We all need some breakthrough, some time in life, and it is prayer that.